Of course, shortening the runners on the intake manifold to make it fit means that the dipstick now hits the underside of the, of the manifold. Originally, the dipstick went right between runners two and three. So I'm going to heat up the dipstick tube with a torch and uh, try to bend it just enough that I can reposition the dipstick to be up in there. Check with my dipstick. Oh. Takes a little bit of a push to get past the bend, but otherwise that is perfect. A little wire brush work to clean it up. Now that it's cooled off and I've put a little paper around it, I'm just gonna touch it up. I wanna show you what I've done for mounting the alternator. So, well, the alternator is in its original position and uh, all of that. Um, but what I've done here is I've taken my bandsaw and I've chopped off half of the original alternator bracket. So this bracket went here, and in fact the bolts went through this bracket uh, to the water pump and then to the block. So the water pump was completely underneath this bracket. And the power steering pump was down here. That was run off of the serpentine belt. There's uh, the, the fan, the radiator fan was on this bearing, and that was also run off the serpentine belt. So the serpentine belt actually went kind of behind there, behind the radiator fan, to the water pump, I'm sorry, behind the radiator fan to the power steering pump, and then back to the main crank. And the water pump pulley was driven off of another built and a second pulley that was on the, the power steering pump right here. So this was driven off of this one. So um, I, I chopped this part of the mount off. I don't need it. I don't want it. And so that gives me better access to the water pump, but it took away the ability for me to drive the water pump from the, the power steering. This is the pulley from a VR6, uh, which fits the water pump, the VR6 uh, water pump pulley. It fits, it fit on the, the hub, the bolts and everything went right through, and it's just the right spacing so it's in line with the, the main serpentine belt grooves on the on the main pulley. Now in the VR6 application it is driven from the back side of the belt uh, where here I'm driving it from the toothed side of the belt but it still seems pretty tight. Like if I put a wrench on it I can get it to slip but it seems like it's got enough friction there to drive the water pump. So I'm still utilizing the factory tensioner um, and a shorter belt. This is a, um, a PK I'm sorry, uh, a five, yeah, 5PK1005. Five so five ribs, and it's uh, 1,005 millimeters uh, long in length. So this is going off of, again, the back side of the crank pulley, tensioner around the alternator and around the water pump. And so that's going to drive, I think, the water pump and the alternator really well. I'm very pleased with that. Now, I'm not going to run power steering in this application for this car but I've decided that uh, I wanted to make the option of running power steering available, especially if anyone else wants to use uh, my parts or my kit here to, um, to, for their engine. So I'm, I've designed, or I'm working on designing an engine mount for this side, and that engine mount on this side will hold the, the power steering pump over here so that uh, the power steering pump can be driven off of the front half of, of the crank pulley. So the oil filter housing, oil filter, oil cooler, pressure sensor, temperature sensor, housing, all that stuff, all integrated into, into one unit here, which is really, really this piece, uh, mounts right here on the back of the block next to where the oil pump is. And then this is the oil cooler. It's a oil to antifreeze cooler. And it, it is indexed. There's these two little tangs here in the back and they kind of capture 
one corner of this cooler. And so that's how you get its location. So it's supposed to be in this orientation with the, uh, the ports, the inlet and the outlet, um, facing kind of outward because this is uh, one of the pipes. This is the, the water pipe that comes from the back of the head across the, the pipe on top of the intake manifold. And then from here, it goes out to the heater core. And from the heater core, it goes back to the, to the, to the pump. So, but I've got that brake booster that's kind of right here in the way. So what I want to do is I want to index this uh, 90 degrees so it's like that. And then I will use, uh, I'll just get some, some hose, some uh, heater hose, and I, I can make a, my own run to go to here. Now I'm not going to run a heater core either, so I'm going to go uh, to the cooler and then out from the cooler to the pump. Um, if you do want to run heat, uh, probably using the 944 heater core would be fine. You would just come out of the cooler to the 944 heater core and then back. But there's a problem here with uh, indexing this cooler like this. And that is, if you look, there's a little bit of a gap between the housing and the cooler. There's uh, too much room for that. The gasket's not that big, it's not gonna seal. And that is because there's a little bit of a bump out on this corner compared to this corner. So while this corner nests nicely within those ears, this corner does not. So I'm going to trim these ears down so that I can index this the way that I want. And I think I'm going to trim just one ear off and then because that'll give me something to kind of notch against to, uh, to hold it steady, to hold it stable. All right, my die grinder made very quick work of uh, that little nub. I have tried to cover everything up to keep the, the metal chips out of the oil passageways. I think I did a good job. So let's see, so now I'm able to put this on and it seals flat so the, the gasket will seal. And uh, one of the reasons why I, I cut the back tang off, I cut that tang off, is that this way, when I go to tighten the nut that holds the cooler on, the cooler won't rotate clockwise because that tang is retaining it. And this will mount right about like that. So I picked up an oil filter relocation kit. Uh, it, it's two pieces with some, some fittings and some hose, and, and really that's about it, um, and a, a ga uh, an O-ring seal. So you thread this piece on um, like you would thread on an oil filter, and then with the fittings and the hose, you can mount this piece in another location, and it has a little nipple that, that threads into the hole for your oil filter, so then your oil filter um, screws into place. So that's, um, that's going to be my, my oil filter solution. However, um, when this threads in all the way and stops, there's a gap here between the, the housing and the cooler. Um, and so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to shorten this nipple a little bit, um, shorten the threads a little bit so that I can thread it all the way on. I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch off of this with the angle grinder just because it's quick and easy. I've threaded on the nut before I cut so that when I'm done with the cut and I clean it up I can then unthread the nut and it'll straighten the threads up. Now right, let's see if this is a better fit.
All right, I love it. That's going to be perfect. Now, when it's in the car, I'll be ready to, to mount those fittings and plummet to the remote filter.